The 2016 Valvoline Motorsport Ireland Forest Rally Championship in association with the following sponsors. Forest Rally Championship promises to be one of the most interesting of the season. With only three point scoring opportunities left, this is a pivotal point in the overall championship and the title quest. Yes, every point is crucial as we enter the business end of the season and with almost 90 crews entered, the Tough Mac Trailers Lakeland Stages Rally could be a watershed moment in the championship. The Lakeland Stages of Fermanagh are run by the Enniskillen Motor Club and yet again this year they have worked tirelessly to ensure that these eight stages will put the competitors through their paces. But who will rise to the occasion? and who will crumble under all that pressure. Desi, your win in Cork, it really catapulted you up the championship leaderboard. Yeah, well, I think if you take drop scores into consideration, we could possibly be leading it by a few points. So um, we can't afford any more drop scores. We've used them all. <laughs> uh, so uh, look, we just need a good consistent finish and look, the further up, the better. Michael, you're leading the championship at the moment, but with drop scores coming into play, what are your thoughts? Um, yeah, well, the drop scores coming in play now, we're not leading it. I think Desi Henry might be leading it by two, and um, myself and Patrick O'Brien might be joint second. So I saw all the play for, they're still even behind that there too. Like, there's a lot of ways charging hard too, so today is going to make the difference. Last year we were here in the Mitsubishi, so this year we're here in the Fiesta R5. So I think we have a slightly better chance in this car, but definitely the competition's very steep out there. So it's going to be tough, so we'll see what we can do. Could we be seeing a star of the future here in Park Fermi? Perhaps, but for now it's Shane Keneally who leads the junior category. Shane, you're our championship leader and doing a little bit of research there? Yeah, we're just having a quick look over in there before we go out. And your thoughts? Yeah, they're all right. They're off and off in place, but they're not too bad. So, hopefully we'll a good run today. Normally the champion is handed out at the end of the rally, but an exception was made for groom-to-be Simon Pickard, who was celebrating his stag weekend by calling the notes for his dad, Phil. I actually proposed to Claire on last year's Glens of Antrim rally at the side oh. of a, a very wet forest ditch and she said yes, <laughs> so she's definitely a keeper. Um, so we thought, what better way to celebrate than, uh, than come and do a rally here? Clerk of the course, Jerry Kavanagh and his team have selected four classic stages, each done twice, the longest of which is Ballon Tempo, which is sure to push man and machine to their limits. Last year's winner, Sam Moffat, knew he was in for another big battle in the Fermanagh Forests. Second best on the opener, the Monaghan man set quickest times on the following two stages to take a five second lead in the Fiesta WRC. Sam's lead was once reduced to one second when he was pipped by younger brother Josh on stage four, driving an or spec Fiesta. Josh was keeping pace from the start, eager to improve on his second place finish from last year's event. Mark Donnelly had been quickest out of the blocks in a Subaru S9 WRC, but a puncture on the long third stage cost him dearly. He slipped to third overall and was playing catch up to the Moffats. Middle over crest, 40, line four, fast one left plus. Mid 40, line for fast one left, into five right. 40, six right over crest, 130. Four left over crest. Titans into dip okay, into middle over bridge okay, 80. Four right, Titans to two right, round at the top there, EFE. One left, 
half long. I repeat, one lap, half long. Still getting used to his recently acquired Toyota Corolla, Adrian Hetherington wasn't happy with his tyre choice for the opening loop, but he held fourth overall with navigator Gary Nolan. The second Mark Donnelly competing in Inniskillen had switched from an Evo to a Fiesta Super 2000 since the last round in Cork and was holding fifth for the moment. Another to make a switch was Niall McCullough, who was making his WRC debut and held sixth place in the McKinstry Run Subaru S14. A remarkable season so far as Mitsubishi Evo 4 left Michael Carbon in the lead for the championship, but the much older machine was struggling with the bumps and jumps in Inniskillen and lay 7th overall after 4 stages. That said, Desi Henry's cutting edge Skoda Fabia R5 didn't cope very well with a jump on stage 3 and he slipped from 3rd to 8th overall. Just no small key on it, it won 70 then. See here, 3 left over bump. See here, 3 left over bump. Oh. Here, 3 left over bump. Uh, and our colour pipe. Yeah, and, and dip, 200 up the mid. Sharp 3 right, don't cut loose. Desi, we saw you there uh, looking a little bit off the pace. Problems? Yeah, we, uh, we were having a fairly good stage and we landed over a jump on our nose and we knocked the pipe off the undercolour, so we do for, for I, would say, I would say, a good half of the stage anyway. So I think we lost over uh, a minute, so... Tough day. Tough day so far, so I just need to see if I can fight back a few places in the next loop. Maybe a cupcake will cheer Desi up as he and his extended family celebrate his dad Raymond's 60th birthday at the rally. Raymond, I can't believe you're 60. You look way fresher than that now. Thank you very much. No, uh, well, I'm definitely 60. <laughs> so, so, so they're telling me anyway, so I think it's right enough. We love to see Desi and Niall competing and they do so well each round. You must be very proud of them. Oh, exactly, exactly proud of them, all right, yes. Uh, we're not going too well today, but we've had our good day, so you have to take the rough with mouth, so. And how are you celebrating? Uh, well, well, probably a few beer tonight, I would imagine. Local crew Johnny Leonard and Jackie Elliott were ninth overall despite a misfire in their Mitsubishi Evo 6. Holding 10th place at the halfway point of the rally, Martin Kearns was unhappy with the setup of his new Fiesta WRC. 100 to a flat crest jump, 130. Now bumping one left, 60. Good lad, small crest, only 80, watch it. Only 80 now, square left, comes quick. Easy. Tying for 10th was the Subaru S14 WRC of Kenny McKinstry. Title contender Patrick O'Brien had been going well in his Evo 9 to hold 5th overall, but the former junior champion survived a close call on stage 3, only to slip off the road and out of the rally on the following stage. Early clutch troubles saw championship hopeful Jer Lucy slip back to 13th place, not where the Corkman wanted to be. Cahan McCourt had been 8th overall before his run of bad luck continued, with another retirement due to mechanical trouble. In the two-wheel drive battle, Shane McGurr took an early lead, but the former champion was feeling every bump and jump along the way in his Toyota Starlet. Shane, it's great to see the Toyota out there, putting it up to the Mark IIs. 
Ah, we're having a good enough day, but I'm suffering a bit on the bumps. I hurt the back yesterday at work, and I can hardly fit to move at the minute. You're hobbling a bit, are you? Hobbling a bit um, over the bumps. We're having to be a wild cautious on the jumps, oh, and this dear. is the worst rally of the year for that because it's nothing but jumps. <laughs> So we're having to watch the bike. David Crossan was expected to challenge for the top two-wheel drive spot, but he got stuck in a ditch after a chicane on stage one. Two seconds off McGurr was the Ford of Mickey Conlon. The escort hit a rock on stage one, knocking the steering out of line. Not an ideal start to the day. 17 seconds adrift and holding third in the two-wheel drive battle was the Pinto-engined escort of John Gordon. John! Talk me through the stages. How are you getting on? Yeah, we're getting on good. Um, stages are slippy and technical. Uh, the good run the first two, but then Mickey took a serious chunk of time out of everybody on the third stage. So it takes a wee while to get settled in the first loop. So hopefully we'll get to the end of it. There were many pitfalls to be wary of, but it was electrical issues that cost David Condell time in the opening loop. We had a good run on the first loop of first two stages or first stage and a half and then we had electrical problems and they haven't gone away so we're going to face the next four with the electrical problems and hopefully we'll get to the finish and see how we go. So. Damien McGarren contested his local stages in his newly built BMW 320. Quite a change from the Toyota Corolla. In Group M there seemed to be exhaust issues from the start for leader David Dennison. He still led the class even after shedding some piping on stage two. With his brother Cahan already retired, Connor McCourt was faring better to hold second in Group N. In the junior class, Stephen Dixon was on course to make it two wins in a row in the Ford Fiesta R2. Six left, dog to five right, tight, seeing over big crest up 100. For six right, plus over crest bump 200 down. To five right. One right, don't cut over bridge. Five right and one right over bridge, don't cut Titans late. 80. Stephen, you're fairly local to these roads. The advantage is to you. Uh, it seems that way so far. I think we're leading, I'm not sure by how much. Um, but no, we're definitely enjoying it and keeping going and just seeing what we can do. And what got you into rallying to begin with? Uh, Dad, he's been rallying for the last 20, 20 or so years. Um, we've always grew up around rallying. Uh, with being in service with Dad and being out and about and helping working cars, so it's, it was kind of hard to avoid. In the blood? Definitely, from the start. <laughs> Junior points leader Shane Keneally was holding second in class in his Mark II Escort. Matters were worse for junior title contenders James Driver and Megan Conway, who retired after an off on stage three. So that's how the leaderboard looks after four tough stages in the forests of Fermanagh. With only seconds separating the top drivers here at the Lakeland Stages Rally, they're rolling out to take on another loop of these tremendous stages. Join us for more in part two. The 2016 Valvoline Motorsport Ireland Forest Rally Championship in association with the following sponsors. Welcome back to Inniskillen, County Fermanagh for part two of the Toughback Trailers Lakeland Stages Rally. Before the break, it was Sam Moffat who led by just a second from younger brother Josh, but the tables were turned when Josh set two fastest times in a row to lead the rally by one second after stage six. Mark Donnelly and Barry McNulty had lost ground to the Moffats after an earlier puncture, but he was back on high flying pace and maintaining third place in his Subaru S9. Titans. Let's see it one right over the bridge. Titans here. 
Wonderful night Titans. Here they Middle of her long crest. Adrian Hetherington and Gary Nolan were holding fourth and getting more confident with every mile in their new Corolla. Another crew adapting to a new mount was Mark Donnelly and Stephen O'Hanlon, who remained fifth in the Fiesta 2000. Middle over crest here, it's a flat right, it's a flat five left, long, there's a flat maybe, okay, flat five left, flat maybe, 60 to the five right, in over bump, flat keep in, 80 flat to the flat six left, 100 to chicane, you can see it, the bus stop, right entry. Watch eggs this. 100, long flat 5 left. Just two seconds in arrears as they climb from 8th to 6th after an earlier mishap were Desi Henry and Liam Moynihan. Small slowing, 6 left long, continue double crest, small slowing now. 6 left continue long, green catch, 6, six care, 6 right to the dip, and flat crest 80, yeah. go to your flat crest 80, 3 right past the junction, 3 right past the junction, you have 80 here now, 3 right, 80. Yeah. Black press one third there. Nursing an injured back whilst maintaining the two-wheel drive lead was Tyrone's Shane McGurr with Mark McGarry calling the notes in the Toyota Starlet. Up to second in the category were David Condell and Eugene McGrath despite a persistent misfire in their Mark II Escort. John Gordon and Thomas Wedlock maintained third in the two-wheel drive battle. Sadly, Mickey Conlon broke a wheel on his escort on stage 5, dropping him outside the top 40, a bitter blow to his title aspirations. Groom to be Simon Pickard and his dad Phil were just outside the top 10 in their Subaru Impreza. To a two left over crest bump, brave! Go on, go on, two left crest bump, brave, 200 after it. Go on, go on, and then jump into flat crest, 170 to chicane. Chicane at the trees on left, go on, go on, chicane at the trees on left. You've lost the headgear, we had you dressed up earlier. I had it on the helmet, being honest, but I, uh, I got to the time control for the first stage and it was all over my pace notes, so I thought I'm going to have to take this off. <laughs> Beautiful. And Phil, how are you finding behind the wheel? The, the roads are suiting you. Brilliant, absolutely brilliant. A, a bit more bumpy than we used to. Um, but yeah, it seems to be taking it well. It does land on my side, I don't understand why. <laughs> and the champagne hasn't been opened yet? Not yet. <laughs> not yet, uh, yet. Not, not we've yet. made it till dinner time and for a Yorkshireman that's pretty good. <laughs> so we're happy. As we head into the closing stages of the rally, let's turn to the class battles now. And taking the runner-up spot in class two was the Peugeot 206 of John Quill and Trish Hogan. The first of three awards for the Dixon family went to Jason Dixon, who won Class 2, with navigator Stephen O'Brien. In Group N, Mayo crew Ed Muldoon and Mark Byrne took fifth place in their Mitsubishi. Ashley Dixon and Niall Conley took fourth in class in another Evo 9. Just one second ahead and third were Dubliners Stephen Cullen and Seamus O'Grady. David Dennison and Gareth Luthwaite lost the class lead on the final loop and had to settle for the runner-up spot behind Group N winners Connor McCourt and Caelan McKenna, who finished 16th overall. Rory Maguire took his third Class 9 win in a row in the Vauxhall Nova. It was a third maximum in a row for Brian Little also, who won Class 10 in his Mark II Escort. Adrian Beatty and Declan Ryan kept themselves in contention for the Class 11F title with the runner-up spot in Fermanagh. Barry Mahan and Alton McGowan extended their lead to three points with their second win of the season. Class 4 left here, half long, 40 after it, 5 right, 40 again, 5 right here, 40 again, 6 left over crest, OK, 100 down to the bus stop. Watch the exit on this bus stop, watch the exit on the bus stop, it's a right-hand entry, Barry. Paul McCann and Paddy Plunkett won Class 15 in their Ford Escort Cosworth. In Class 16, the juniors, Shane Keneally and Jer Connors recorded a disappointing non-finish when they retired their Escort on the second loop. 
Delighted to take the runner-up spot in the juniors after some recent bad luck in the Nova were Derek Mackerel and Dara Hayes. But taking their second class win in a row were Stephen Dixon and Tommy Hayes, who move into the lead of the junior championship with two rounds to go. Uh, it's nice in the home rally in the championship. Um, definitely with a, with a good run, a good steady push most of the day. Um, uh, it's, nice to, it's nice to get first in the end of it. In the overall two-wheel drive battle, John Gordon and Thomas Wedlock retake the points lead from Mickey Conlon and Kieran McPhillips with a third place in Inniskillen. Second quickest two-wheel drive crew, despite a puncture on the penultimate test, was the escort of David Condell and Eugene McGrath. Tackling the bumps and jumps of the Lakeland stages may not have been the best treatment for a recent back injury, but taking the two-wheel drive win may have eased the pain a little for Shane McGurr, who finished 11th overall with navigator Martin McGarity. Uh, we're delighted with it now. The stages was fantastic. It's just a pity we couldn't get the full benefit of from, with the back, but we took a ton of deep heat with us that time, and <laughs> we're charging deep heat on every stage. Poor Marty's poison sitting beside me there with it. <laughs> To the overall battle now, where Michael Carbon and Dara Kelly had been in line for another good haul of points, but they slid off the road on the penultimate stage, a massive dent to their title run. They weren't the only ones to fall foul of the long Ballantempo stage, as Mark Donnelly and Stephen O'Hanlon were forced to retire after bringing a shock in their fiesta. Adrian Hetherington and Gary Nolan had been fourth until they got their Corolla stuck on the final corner of Ballantempo. Having better luck was navigator Simon Pickard, who got his stag weekend off to a good start, finishing 10th overall with his dad Phil driving in the Subaru Impreza. Jer Lucy's clutch trouble almost cost him a finish, but he and JJ Kremen managed to take ninth place and move into the overall championship lead. Kenny McKinstry and James O'Reilly took 8th overall in the S14 WRC. Top local crew was the Evo 6 of Johnny Leonard and Jackie Elliott, who finished 7th overall despite a persistent misfire in the Mitsubishi. Martin Kearns and Gary McElhenney enjoyed a much improved 2nd loop to finish 6th overall in the Fiesta WRC. A fine debut drive with WRC power netted 5th place for Niall McCullough and Ryan McCluskey. Desi Henry and Liam Moynihan battled back to take fourth place in the Skoda Fabia R5. Having punctured early on, Mark Donnelly and Barry McNulty had to settle for third place on the podium. There was a dramatic conclusion to the Lakeland stages with Josh and Sam Moffat once again battling for the overall win. Josh and navigator Jason McKenna stopped the clocks with a total time of 38 minutes, 9 seconds in their Fiesta R5. Sam and co-driver James Fulton finished the eight stages with the exact same time, which meant a tiebreaker to decide the winner. After some drawn-out consultation with timesheets and rule books, it was adjudged that Sam Moffat's fastest time on stage two proved decisive, and he was awarded the overall win. Now, boys, we often talk about the sibling rivalry between you. It was a really tough decision. Sam, it did go your way. You must be delighted. <laughs> Yeah, it looked like it went my way and back to Josh's way and thankfully I ended up with myself. So, yeah, it was a real good day and a real good battle and very enjoyable rally. Have you been gloating at all? No, 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 not <laughs> at all. <laughs> Josh, it must be so disappointing to think you haven't won. It's so close all day, but he just got there ahead of you. Yeah, definitely. Uh, it's a pity now in the end, but uh, I'm happy for Sam all the same and it was a great rally and it was very well run, so very happy in general. So there's confirmation of the final results of the Tough Mac Trailers Lakeland Stages, which sees Sam Moffat take his second win in a row, but in the Valvoline Series, it's all changed at the top with two rounds to go. Well, we often talk about the sibling rivalry between Josh and Sam Moffat, and here at the Lakeland Stages, it was no different. But after eight gruelling rounds, and with nothing between them, it was Sam Moffat who came out on top to take the title. Join us next time when we head to Limerick. We'll see you then.